2021 marks the centenary year of a group of movements under the umbrella of Pax Romana. With this movement, we have united students and intellectual professionals along with local and national organisations with a shared belief towards spirituality of action and a commitment to change the world by instilling values from the Gospel. At the wake of World War I, the movement took shape when the Catholic Student Associations in Switzerland, Spain and Holland proposed to reform L'Union Internationale des Etudants Catholiques, an earlier effort that lasted from 1887 to 1891. Under Max Grisly, the Swiss Students Association has kept this idea alive. July 18, 21st, 1921 saw a congress being organized in Fribro, Switzerland, with approval of Pope Benedict XV. With the agreement from student delegates from 17 European countries, the United States, Java, now Indonesia, and Argentina, a new Catholic student confederation was formed. The new structure is organized under the emblem of Pax Romana as a symbol of peace across borders. The structure's aim includes the coordination of existing national federation, the establishment of new national groups, idea sharing via journals, a magazine, and organizing relief programs for students displaced by World War I. Pax Romana's first program took place in Ravenna, Italy, a few weeks after the foundation. One of the participants was Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassetti, an active member of Fuji and a strong supporter of Pax Romana. In a letter to a delegate he met at the session, he wrote, If all people were to have it as their inner spirit, Pax Romana would bring peace and justice. In the 15 years following the 1921 Congress, Pax Romana as a visible symbol of peace and unity among students from different countries grew first in Europe and in the 1930s in the Americas. September 1939 saw Pax Romana holding its first World Congress outside Europe in Washington DC and New York under Ed Kirchner, the first non-European president. While nearly 400 student leaders met World War II started with the invasion of Poland by Germany. The participants, including Polish and German students, joined in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament, a deeply symbolic gesture of Pax Romana's mission as an international student peace movement. The 25th Anniversary Congress in Fribro saw Pax Romana being refounded as two movements. The International Movement of Catholic Student IMCS, for university students and International Catholic Movement for Intellectual and Cultural Affairs ICMICA, for graduates and professionals. This plan had received strong support from St. Pope Paul VI, the then National Chaplain of Fuji in Italy. With Pax Romana expanding beyond Europe, the first Inter-American Assembly took place in Colombia, 1941. The first Pan-Asian Seminar was planned in India by IMCS in 1954. In 1957, Maria de Lourdes Pintasilgo, the first female president of IMCS, planned a Pan-African Seminar in Ghana. She later became one of the first female head of states Europe. A series of meetings in Manila was organized by both IMCS and ICMICA for students, chaplains, Catholic doctors and graduates. A joint conference with UNESCO on the religions of Asia was also organized. This will be the first Vatican-approved interfaith conference. During the 1950s and 60s, we took on leadership roles in promoting what was known as the Late Apostolate, helping to convey two World Congresses of the Late Apostolate. 
At the start of Vatican II, we were ready to mobilize lay voices to engage with the Council. Eventually, it leads to some Pax Romana leaders being chosen to be in a small group of lay auditors for the Council. They had a significant voice in shaping the text of Vatican II. A key figure to this movement was Rosemary Goldie from Australia, an active leader in Pax Romana since 1937, as well as a staff person of the Freebro Secretariat from 1946 to 1952. After Vatican II, she became the first lay female to have a role in the Vatican Korea. As Pax Romana celebrated its 50th anniversary, the 1971 assembly picked the theme, Liberation How. The chaplains, including Tisa Balasuria, Albert Nolan, and Gustavo Gutierrez, helped guide the movement in a new understanding of its mission in the world along with the emergence of liberation theology. At the same time, the student movement in Latin America and Europe developed closer ties to IYCS and eventually joined to regions were created. With the renewed orientation to liberation from all forms of oppression, Pax Romana has been led to deepen our international advocacy in the United Nations. This meant being included in strong engagement on situations where Pax Romana members and partners are being persecuted and tortured for their human rights work. A training program for human rights defenders was launched in Geneva in the 1990s. During the 2000s, ICMICA helped national members work on the universal periodic review process. IMCS, on the other hand, has been engaging on youth and student issues, including youth participation in decision-making. After the 2000 UN conferences, IMCS co-founded the International Coordination Meeting of Youth Organization, or ICMIO, a network of major youth NGOs in 2004 and later took leadership roles in the major group for children and youth. Today, IMCS and ICMICA marches on, strengthened with the mission passed on by previous generations. With over 120 affiliated organizations of students and professionals in more than 70 countries, Pax Romana is more than able to support leaders both for the church and the world. In response to the current COVID-19 crisis, members of the Pax Romana family from around the world has showed renewed interest in the life of their global movement. With new communicative technologies, IMCS and ICMICA members have responded to the COVID crisis with a new spirit of fraternity and solidarity across borders, cultures, and generations. Moving forward, IMCS and ICMICA are committed to deepen the experience of this movement with a renewed sense of mission and purpose. We hope that you will be able to join us in making this a reality.